Let's think about what happens to the wall shear as we heat the flow. What I have here are contours of the velocity magnitude. So I've created um, a velocity magnitude contour object. I've turned it on, turned off the temperature contours. And I have also, in the view, turned on the location x equal to 2.67 meters. So you see over here, and if I go to that uh, location, what I did was I stretched it out by a factor of 30 in the radial direction, okay? And I also went into the velocity magnitude contour object and changed the transparency so that you can see the location as well as the, the contours. Now darker red is faster, and so as we heat the flow, we see that the flow um, speeds up. And that's because at, uh, as we heat the flow, the density decreases, the density of air decreases. And to have the same mass flow rate crossing any cross-section, we need to have a higher velocity on the average. In other words, the momentum on average at any location is going to increase when heat is added. Now, turbulence is essentially a mixing phenomenon, so it's very good at taking that increased momentum and transporting it or mixing it closer to the wall. In other words, at the wall, the velocity is zero, but as I'm coming off the wall, I will see a higher velocity because of that higher momentum. And in other words, the gradient of the velocity at the wall is higher, and since the wall shear is proportional to the, the gradient of the velocity normal to the wall, the wall shear I expect it to be higher, which is what I'm seeing in the simulation result. So if I go back to the wall shear plot, so I go into the chart viewer and I, I can double click on wall shear to get that back. So I do see that um, the wall shear increases in the heated region, which I just uh, explained, and uh, so that that is uh, meets my expectations. And then in the mixing section, it flattens out, which also I expect. Now in the flow development section, I expect it to flatten out to a fully developed value, and so I'm. Here, what we are seeing is you actually get a dip and then you, you have this increase. So one is not sure if this is an effect of the simulation. So one, for instance, would have to refine the mesh and see if that is going to change. Um, or it might be an effect of the, the wall function that one is using to model the the, the turbulent layer next to the wall, and one might need to use something more sophisticated than standard wall functions.